Hello, I'm Mrs. Sutton, your librarian at East Campus. In this video, you're going to learn to use the Google Citations tool to create in-text citations and works cited pages. You're probably wondering what the MLA style is exactly. There are several different ways to cite sources depending on the discipline of your research. In sciences and social sciences, the APA or American Psychological Association style is used. In the humanities, like your English class, the MLA, or Modern Language Association format, is used. No matter the style, formatting research papers in a uniform fashion is important. According to Purdue University's Online Writing Center, the MLA style is used to make it easier for readers to navigate and understand texts that refer to sources and borrowed information. Generally, using MLA helps readers to follow your ideas and locate specific information easily. It also helps to establish your credibility or ethos. Also, since fellow researchers or your teacher may need to look up your sources, using MLA helps them to quickly locate that information. Formatting research papers in MLA style or other styles is a skill you will use in all of your Lake Park classes, as well as in college courses. The good news is that once you understand the basics of formatting a research paper in one style, your skills and knowledge will easily transfer to other styles. All right, before you get too far into the writing and citing process, let's take a moment to make sure your paper is properly formatted in the MLA style. Typically, this step comes after you've completed the bulk of your research and found your sources, but before you've really started typing your paper. Here are the general guidelines you'll want to make sure you have set correctly in your document. Keep this list handy. Even if you've written hundreds of research papers, it's always a good idea to run through this checklist before turning in your paper. Before you begin writing, set your font to a legible font, preferably Times New Roman, font size 12. Set the margins of your document to one inch on all sides. Insert a header that numbers all pages consecutively in the upper right-hand corner of the page. Align it to the right margin. Note, your teacher may ask that you don't put the number on your first page. Always follow your teacher's guidelines. Make sure the font of your page numbers matches the font style and size of the rest of your paper. Now, in the upper left-hand corner of the first page, list your name, your instructor's name, the course, and the date. This should all be double-spaced. Now, create the title of your paper. Your title should be spaced the same as your header and the rest of your paper. You do not need extra space here. Also, do not underline, italicize, or place your title in quotation marks. Write the title in title case, standard capitalization, and not in all capital letters. During writing. Use the tab key to indent the first line of each paragraph. Your paragraphs do not need any additional spaces between them, just the indentation and the standard double spacing. Use italics throughout your essay to indicate the title of longer works. For example, night. Leave only one space after periods or other punctuation marks. As a general rule, stick to the present tense throughout your entire research paper, unless you are discussing a historical event. Numbers should generally be spelled out as long as the number is only a word or two. Think 10, 25, etc. Larger numbers like 158, 2,981, those should be typed out numerically. The next steps are to type your paper and work on your in-text citations. There are two ways to approach this. One way is to type out your entire paper, earmarking where you need to go back and format the citations. I do this usually by putting in a rough in-text citation marker, empty parentheses, for example. The second way is to format your citations correctly as you go. Your choice will depend completely on your personal preference. Me, I prefer to get all my thoughts down so as not to interrupt my train of thought, and then I go back and format my citations as I read through my paper for clarity. Whenever in the process you choose to format your citations, you will begin the process by clicking on the Tools menu, and then citations while in a Google Doc. The Google Citations tools are awesome because once you've entered your sources, you just click to insert in-text citations 
And when you're finished, you can insert a pre-formatted works cited page in just a few clicks. Okay, so now you're in the citations input menu. You'll notice the default is MLA 8th edition. Click on add citation source for each source you've referenced in your paper. Next, choose your source type. Most of your research will likely fall under website or for database articles, choose journal article and then accessed by online database. But be sure to choose whichever sources and access points fit your actual research process. Next, work through the fields filling in the requested information. You should focus on trying to complete the starred fields as they are the most important. However, if you cannot find the specific information, even if it's a starred field, simply skip the box. Keep in mind, if you have looked thoroughly and are still missing a lot of information needed for the citation, that's a clue you may not have the best source and you may want to find a replacement. Keep in mind, the citation generator will create your work cited information with whatever you provide into it. So your citations will only be as strong as the information you put into the fields. If your author is an organization or company, checking that box will shift the field from multiple input boxes to a single one. If you have more than one author, click the contributor button and add the information for each one. On a website, the title of the article is generally in bold at the top of the page. The title of the website frequently appears up in the tab you have open. It is possible that the title of the website and the title of the article will be the same. The publisher of the website is not required. Generally, it's a larger organization or company that is behind the website. If you can find it, it's useful to include, but it may not always be easy to find. The URL is just the web address. Be sure to copy and paste it so that it's accurate. It's important to find the year that a website was published. If you cannot find this information, definitely reconsider using your source. Pay attention to the order of the day, month, and year of access fields. You need to spell out the month in words, not type in numbers. And lastly, ignore the short title. When all the information for your source is inputted the way that you would like it, click on Save Source. If you're entering information about a journal article from an online database, it's recommended that you use the citation button on the journal article to get the pre-formatted citation. Then you can take that citation and copy the information into the Google Citation Tools. Since MLA citations are written in a standard format, the pre-formatted citation from the database will be formatted in exactly the same order as the fields are listed when you add citation sources in Google Citation Tools. Keep in mind as you're entering that information that if it seems like information is missing from that pre-formatted citation, it's likely that it wasn't available. So you'll also want to skip it in the fields in Google Citation Tools. If you prefer not to retype the citation from the database into Google Citations, you can copy and paste the pre-formatted citations in their entirety from the database articles directly into your work cited after it has been created. However, if you do that, you will need to adjust a lot of formatting in the pasted citations, and you'll need to be sure to put them into your work cited page in exactly the correct spot in alphabetical order. If you do that, please be sure to check the indent, text color, text highlight color, font size, and font style. Also, be sure to adjust any parts of the citation that may appear in all caps. Plus, if you make changes, you'll have to reinsert your entire work cited. And if you've pasted citations in, they will be missing and you'll need to paste them again. Honestly, it's just easier to type the information into the add citation source so that you can continue to manipulate the order of your sources, the number of your sources, etc. as you're working. You'll want to repeat the steps to input citation sources for each one of your sources. If you need to edit or delete a source, just click on the three dots in the upper right hand corner of the source entry in the citations tool. Then you can click on edit or delete. Once all of your sources have been input into the citation tool, you're ready to insert in-text citations. To insert an in-text citation, place your cursor in your paper where you would like the in-text slash parenthetical citation. Click on the source in the citations menu. Then in the upper right corner of the source, click cite. 
You should see your in-text citation inserted with parentheses, the author's last name, and sometimes a pound sign. If you see a pound sign in the parenthetical citation, you can either enter the page number where you found the information, or if the page number is unknown, you can delete the pound sign and the extra space from within the parenthetical citation. When you are finished typing your paper, adding your sources, and creating your in-text citations, the final step is to create your works cited page. First, place your cursor at the very end of your type paper. Then, click the Insert menu of your Google Doc and select Page Break. This will take you to the top of a brand new page at the bottom of your document. And, no matter if you continue editing your essay, it should keep your work cited on a separate page, as is required in MLA format. To format the Works Cited page in your Google Doc, go to the Tools menu, then Citations, if you aren't already in the Citations tool. Then, click Insert Bibliography, and your formatted citations should appear in your paper. You'll notice that at the top of your Works Cited page, the title actually says Bibliography instead of Works Cited. Make that quick change to edit from Bibliography to Works Cited by typing in the words Works Cited, both in capital and centered at the top of your page. Then give your citations a once over to make sure they look the way you want and you're all finished. If you notice something that needs to be changed when you're giving that once over or you add in another source and need to add a citation, the best approach is to delete your entire works cited page, make the necessary adjustments in the source in your citations tool, and reinsert the entire works cited page so that it's formatted exactly the way you want and with all of the information you need.